In this video I'm going to show you how I set up this Blackwater Neon Tetra tank. So I'm using a All Pond Solutions Hob Hang On Back Filter. And also for heating it's a Denali 50 watt heater. I've also bought a little mat to sit the tank on. This is the substrate and the stones that I'll be using. More of a natural look to what I normally use. And soaking the bogwood. This is what will give the tannins. Just going to show you how I set the tank up now. Using some egg crate just to support the weight of the rocks against the glass on the bottom don't really need it as the rocks won't be that big in this build but put it there anyway the substrate is a mix of cheap pea gravel that you get from a builders merchant uh, mixed with some aquarium substrate it's a bit sandy it's a bit messy but I'll show you how I get rid of that uh, in a bit just gives more of a natural look to what I usually use, you know, like the black sandy stuff that I use normally. Substrate doesn't need to be very deep because I won't be planting any plants in here because it's going to be black water and the plants won't really grow very well in uh, black water. These are just some rocks that I got from the garden. I've had these a while and just used them in various different scapes and the bogwood I've been soaking in a bucket for a couple of days just to make sure it sinks for when I do this scape I actually changed the scape uh, after I do this you'll see that in a bit but I was just trying to get the bogwood to uh, come out the top of the water and it did do that but I just wasn't happy with how well it was placed you know I just thought it was going to fall over and just create a mess so I, I did it like this but then I changed it afterwards so I don't think too much about the scape I just move things around until they look good really just until I'm happy with it all now another way to get some tannins into the water to make it a black water tank is by adding these Indian almond leaves a lot of people use these leaves for the tannins but also because they're quite good for the fish apparently so I've added those in here wasn't really sure how much tannins that I'd get from the leaves and the bogwood I, was, I thought it might be too much because I added about six to eight leaves but it turned out alright in the end just buried the leaves with some substrate because they'll float up otherwise going to fill it up now with water and this is where you really see all the sand and that come out of the uh, substrate even though I already used this stuff in my paludarium build a while ago and I, I already rinsed it out and everything but the sand just comes back and I use a, a pump attached to a hose to fill up my tanks because I'm not really into carrying buckets around it creates too much of a mess anyway so I do it this way it's a lot easier especially on big tanks as well I'm just gonna prime the filter because the hob filter and it needs some water in it for it to run before you turn it on so filters running now and the water's really cloudy you know it's got a lot of sand in there just going to add the floating plants, dwarf water lettuce 
because I mentioned before, plants won't really survive in the uh, black water very well. You know, you might get away with like Anubius or whatever, but so we're going to add these floating plants. With the light above them, they should grow really well too. Like, they should just cover the top of the water. And the roots coming down should look really nice as well. So this is a uh, filter floss. Temporarily put a load of filter floss in there just to clean out the sand and get rid of the cloudiness in the water. I removed the floss afterwards and I put seeded media in there so that I can add the fish and instantly cycle the tank. These are some thermometers. Got these for about two quid each off eBay. Just gonna add two in there for now. Just to monitor the temperature of the water, see what temperature the heater is heating the water up to. See how efficient it is. It's only a small heater. And then I'll remove one of the thermometers and I'll just have one. Gonna have this tank around 25 26 degrees Celsius because that's what the neon tetras will like it at. Just using the bubble wall temporarily just to move the water around to get rid of the sand, and it's worked really well. It's still a bit cloudy, but at least there's no sand. Pothos, my secret weapon. I'll be adding the pothos in here too. Temporarily had it in a jar, waiting for the tank to be set up. I've made a few videos before about pothos, and I'll have it in every tank that I make. It's just really good at absorbing, you know, sucking up the nitrates out of the water. It's a really nice plant, it looks really good. And the roots will provide some real nice cover for the fish. This is a really big bunch of pothos that I have here. Just want to make sure that all the roots are in the water and try and get it so the leaves aren't in the water because the leaves are in the water, they will eventually die. So I'll just put that in there like that. As I said before, I changed the scape a bit afterwards. I moved the pothos too, so all this is changed now and I'll show you that in a second. Here's the pothos roots. The white bits are new growths on the roots so they'll spread out really nicely. Two days later now the tannins have started to kick in. This is really what I wanted the tank to look like with the tannins and the rocks and the leaves just to make it look really natural. It's come out really well, just how I wanted it to look. As I said, I changed the scape, uh, just so the wood's a bit more secure. And yeah, I like it. So here are the new fish, the Neon Tetras. I'm just acclimating them. I bought XL Neon Tetras, extra large just because I think uh, the bigger fish has a better chance of uh, survival really because fish like this that are so small can be really fragile so the extra large ones I think would have a better uh, survival rate they cost a little bit more but I think it's worth it and they're not massive they're just they're just adult sized as you can see here, the uh, the Neon Tetra I've got in here at the moment, I got that out my big tank, he was the only one left and uh, he was just hiding from the big fish. 
in the main tank so I put him in here, in here a couple days earlier and as you can see he's already shoaling with the uh, the new fish before I've even managed to acclimate them so this just shows you why you shouldn't have one or even just a pair of fish especially neon tetras because they are a schooling fish or a shoaling fish um, and they like to be in groups so you should always get at least you know six seven of these fish I'm just teasing him now moving the bag from uh, left to right just to show you how how much he's trying to group with these new fish it's quite funner just add in the last couple of fish now you don't want to mix the water out the bag with the water in your aquarium because the water from the bag comes from the aquarium shop or wherever you got them from and you just don't want to mix it with your own water really that's why I net them out the bag rather than just putting the whole bag in the fish I had in here originally have blended in really well you know, I can't tell which one he is to be honest fish are hiding just getting used to the new tank using those pothos roots that I mentioned earlier as a bit of cover works really well and as you can see from that big white root in front the pothos will just grow really well in pretty much any conditions really that's why it's such a good plant four days after adding the new fish and they've all settled in really well started eating pretty much straight away as well which is always a good sign and they're just chasing each other around really sparring fighting I think they're trying to work out the hierarchy you know which one's the boss this is why you need such a long tank because uh, these sort of fish really do like to swim up and down the length of the tank dart around so it's really good that you make sure they get the space to swim this tanks 80 centimeters long 30 centimeters depth and 24 and a half centimeters tall it's quite a shallow tank but it's very long it holds about 60 litres of water they're still sparring I think they'll do this for quite a while if not forever really it's great to watch it doesn't look like there's much tannins in the tank at the moment but it's just the video footage there's a, there's a bit of tannins in there it looks really nice, looks really natural especially with the uh, buried leaves and the rocks and the natural uh, substrate looks really good and also the floating plants are starting to get some uh, proper roots on them they'll eventually have loads of roots and the whole top section will just be roots from the dwarf lettuce that look really nice so I've just fed them and they're going around quite crazy looking for the food just some uh, fluval tropical flakes it's important to feed these uh, small fish small food to make sure that they can actually eat it so I feed these small fluval flakes and hikari micro pellets you can always crush the food up a little bit in your fingers just to make sure that they can get it and they're still sparring with each other nice thing about this tank is how shallow it is you can actually look over the top 
like you would in like a, a river or a stream. Looks really good. I thought the tannins might come out a little bit more. Although there are tannins in there, you know, you, in real life you can see it a lot better than on the camera. See here, it doesn't look like there's much tannins at all, but there is. With, the, uh, with all the almond leaves and the bogwood though, I thought there'd be a lot more. I thought maybe it'd be too dark, but it's not. It's a bit lighter than I'd like it to be, but it's alright. I'm just going to leave it a while longer see if they come out a little bit more over time which they should do and yeah so here is the nano blackwater neon tetra aquarium if you have any questions or if you want me to explain something in more detail then just comment in the section below all the equipment that I use including the tank itself I'll leave Amazon links to in the description. And if you like the video then please subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.